latest from Cowboys training camp, including updates on CeeDee Lamb, Dak Prescott, some takeaways as well, is made possible today by Roan. Get 20% off your order when you go to roan.com slash chat sports. Tell you more about them and the Cowboys on today's show, but I'm calling it. We got like 30 hours left until the July-like battle is over. I am calling it in favor of the Cowboys, so don't make me look dumb. Let's make sure we, we, we finish this, this race out here. We got a big lead over the, the Raiders report and likes. Let's crush them. Like today's video and every video you watch here on the Cowboys report. Let's go into the latest here on C.D. Lamb. We had the closing in on a deal report from Pretty Ricky yesterday. Other Cowboys reporters disputing, disputing that. If you weren't paying attention yesterday, here's what happened. Pretty Ricky sends out this tweet. Cowboys closing in on a four-year deal worth between $136, $138 million. Meanwhile, other reporters connected to the Cowboys, Clarence Hill, friend of the show Jane Slater, Ed Werder, saying not true. So unfortunately, we have a bit of a friend of the show off between Jane and pretty Ricky here. Now, Clarence had said, ah, it's not a credible source at all, which I think is actually doing a disservice to what Ricky has nailed this offseason. There is credibility here. He was first, sometimes by multiple days, mind you, and actually getting the details right, not just guessing, or if he is, he's the greatest guesser ever in human history, like actually getting the nitty-gritty details with it for Calvin really to Tennessee, Tyler Boyd to Tennessee, OBJ to Miami, the Tua deal, the Trevor Lawrence deal, the Justin Jefferson deal, the Jared Goff deal, Amon Ross St. Brown, the Brian Burns trade down to the draft picks that were involved there. It's not something you're going to guess. So there, there is a track record of success there. So I'd say just patience at this point. Which, to be fair, if your patience is over, if it's worn too thin, I get it. Every party involved here does think this gets done at some point in the somewhat near future. That's, that's days, hours, hopefully not a week, but it, it, it will, I, I'm convinced it will get done. Steven said a new offer from Lamb's Camp, by the way, came in Sunday night, late Sunday night. So there has been traction and developments there. But I do very much understand if there's frustration and, and just a, a why is this still going on? I, I totally get that. So will the Cowboys pay C.D. Lamb this week? The deal be finalized, officially announced, etc. It is the pinned comment on today's show. So if the ad comes on YouTube, take advantage of it. Head down there. Why for yes and for no if you think the Cowboys will pay C.D. Lamb. Now, also make note, Dallas Morning News, Mike Fisher reporting, the main issues here are the guaranteed money. And for as much grief as I give the Cowboys over, and it's still accurate, ah, this, these things take time, you, you've had time, the guaranteed part does take time, actually, which is why this should have been prioritized a while ago and not just kind of wait until the last second and deadlines make deals BS and get the attention the Cowboys love. I fully expect CeeDee Lamb to come in as the second highest paid wide receiver in terms of guaranteed money. Where that number fits, how close to Justin Jefferson, is a very valid question. Might not be a huge difference. Might be a few million dollars. To that point, you're still just kind of factoring, okay, how much of year three, year four are you guaranteeing of this contract? All of which is fair to have conversations about. You know? Because there's a big gap at wide receiver, and mostly pass rushers among the five highest paid non-QBs. So that part, I can totally see elements of everyone's reporting being correctly, right? The original report was that Lamb was going to demand a trade if he didn't get $32 million offer. That was the bare minimum to keep having contract talks. If you're not going to be serious with me, I'm not going to be here, right? He wants the 34, he wants 34, 34 and a half, back and forth on that front. Guarantee takes a little bit longer. I'm willing to bet the years at some point were a sticking point as well. All those things end up being true in a day, two, whatever, Lamb gets done, and it ends up looking pretty darn similar to the numbers that Ricky had initially reported they were going to be. But we have to wait, and it's, of course, frustrating to wait. More Cowboys camp coverage to come. It's made possible today by Roan. I'm rocking one of their polos, and you should get their clothes as well. They have a product for every occasion. Most comfortable pants dress shirts, quarter zips, polos, blazers as well. 
They look great as individual pieces, and of course, they work seamlessly together. Their signature four-way stretch fabric is breathable, flexible, and works everywhere, from work to the commute to and from, to dinner, drinks, the golf course. I like running this golf course because it's, it's comfortable, it's lightweight, it's breathable, and I look, I feel good in it, and that's a big deal for when I'm playing golf out there. They also have wrinkle-release technology, so 100% machine washable. More wares between washes, too, with their, odor, with their Gold Fusion anti-odor technology. The Commuter Collection can get you through any workday and straight into whatever comes next. Head to roan.com slash chat sports to save 20% off your entire order. That's 20% off your entire order when you go to rhone.com slash chat sports and use code chat sports. Find your corner office comfort and upgrade your closet with Roan. Links in the comments section and the description of today's show. Let's go to the latest here on Dak, and I'll preface this by saying I'm I kind of don't like talking Dak contract anymore. It's it's a lot of the same stuff, and it's political to in in the sense that people are just dug in on their sides and listen to other people. You know how you feel. It's fine how I feel. I, I don't. I'm not going to argue with people there anymore. Here's what David Moore says on, on where things sit with the Cowboys contract offers. Three QBs, Love, Jacksonville's Trevor Lawrence, Tazani's Joe Burrow, now sit an average of $55 million. Tonga Bailoa and Jared Goff, who also reached a new deal this offseason, are at $53 million. The latest offer to Prescott puts him in that window in terms of average salary. Two people who have seen the offer confirmed. This says a lot without actually saying anything, is my issue here. What does in that window mean? Is it above it? Is the window to 56? Is, the, is it 54? Like, what's the... You have an, you know what the offer is saying. Like otherwise, don't report it. As far like putting it in a window doesn't mean anything to me. Here are the highest paid quarterbacks in the NFL. If you're going, huh, a lot of those guys are new. Yeah, that's how it works, right? Like Jordan Love getting paid on a 10 game sample size. Trevor Lawrence was kind of like bad down the stretch last year. Joe Burrow is still super highly paid. There's there's a lot of different elements at play. For each of these contracts, they're all different. And even sometimes, like the guaranteed money means a lot. That, that is the real indication of how much you're probably actually going to get on a contract. That's why NFL teams refuse to do the, the Deshaun Watson deal again. They do not want to do a fully guaranteed contract. NFL owners did not like that. And frankly, there's been collusion. They've, they've colluded against the NFL players of, of doing it. Which, hey, they all independently agreed to it. So maybe it's not technically collusion, right? But the guaranteed money, there's even asterisks on these deals, right? Trevor Lawrence had multiple years left on his deal, got a five-year extension. Because of the actual length of the deal, that guaranteed number goes up. It's the exact same thing with Joe Burrow, by the way. Uh, Jordan Love's second deal, which pays more than Tua Tungavailoa, has less guaranteed money, technically speaking. There's rolling guarantees in Jordan Love's deal that like, you could technically post June 1st him after two years and save money, except that's what you're looking at it right now, and there's a rolling guarantee that the year before that, so it kind of doesn't, it's not actually, act, like, it, it's deceptive because of the way the Packers do their guaranteed money structure. In the end, when it comes to contracts for me, that's kind of why I hate talking about it. It is all or nothing. Either you believe in your guy, you believe in Tua, you believe in Jordan Love, you believe in Jared Goff, you believe in Dak Prescott, you believe in Trevor Lawrence, and you just pay those guys. Because the alternative is very scary for many teams. It's, well, you know what? If we don't pay Tua, uh, we're fired. Or we miss on the next guy, we're fired. So I understand the angle of, you know what? I, I'm not haggling over three, four, whatever it is, million dollars. I'll make it up with the way I structure deals. I'll be aggressive in my window with that guy. Anyway, the Cowboys have not been, by the way, at any point with Dak Prescott as their QB. Don't let them gaslight you into thinking otherwise. Or you blow it up and rebuild. It's it's that I, I would go to the extremes. Not, you know, I believe in him, but only if I save $2 million. Like that's, at that point, it's like gas. I'm just going to pay for it. Not to overuse the gas analogy, but I'm, I'll stick with, with, the, with QBs and land for that. So will the Cowboys pay Dak Prescott? A for yes, B for no. Sound off in the comments of today's video. It sounds like there's progress here, which may or may not be a good thing for you depending on how you feel about it, which is fine. 
a lot of this in the end does kind of come down to Dak Prescott. Does he want to? Stephen Jones said, hey, the ball's in that, in that team's camp. It, it, or it's in their court, which is true. Kind of been true for a while now. Um, Dak Prescott, and I also mentioned Todd France probably playing a big role here because that's why you hire Todd France to handle this shit for you. Dak Prescott is, in a, is months away from being in a historic spot. We have not seen a quarterback of his age, his resume, and his health, all three of those things. We've seen healthier. We've seen better resume QBs. We've seen better QBs, but we're older. Enter free agency. Has it happened? Might not ever happen with the way the NFL handles their manages their, their quarterback rooms these days. Now, if Dak says, you know what? I, I just, you, you have to blow me away. Because worst case, I can come back next offseason and say, you know what? Now I'll take less. In the end, it is not Dak Prescott's job to manage the salary cap. If his deal doesn't start with the six, that's probably him taking less. As weird and wild and sticker shocky as that might sound, that's where we're at. The Cowboys' mistake was not this offseason with Dak Prescott. It wasn't last offseason with Dak Prescott. It's like five years ago when they low-balled him the first few times and they could have gotten ahead of the market and they could have built up some goodwill, but now they wanted to do the franchise tag game and then they eventually caved. That's why this organization has the reputation with top agents, don't take the first offer. Don't take the early offers. They will cave eventually. They're not good at the contract stuff for the, big, for the, top, for the top of the market guys. They're simply just not great at it. I don't know what's going to happen. When we find out officially, we'll break it down for you, I'm sure. You know, like politics. Half of you will hate it. Half of you will be glad it, it happened, right? Hit that sub button for more Cowboys updates. We'll get some training camp stuff here momentarily. We are approaching 190,000 subscribers. Hit that sub button so you don't miss out. Couple, we'll go kind of rapid fire because this is going to get a little long otherwise. Uh, training camp takeaways. Trayvon Diggs is back, activated from the pup list for the Dallas Cowboys. Now, he's going to ramp up slowly, as we mentioned in the short we posted on this earlier this afternoon. But Diggs is back for Dallas. That is a great sign. He will be good to go for week one, barring a significant setback. Takeaway number two. Yeah, attendance is down. I know it's a Tuesday. But it was lighter than it normally was on Tuesdays. For Back Together Weekend, it was lighter than it normally is. There is apathy in the fan base. I don't blame anybody. They, there's, there's one group to blame. It's the Jones boys. This is, this is a front office issue. That's why attendance is down. And I don't blame you. It's, the, the vibes are still bad. The vibes are still bad. So rate how you feel about the Cowboys for the 2024 season. Your scale is 1 to 10, 1 on the low end, 10 on the high end. You know, Mike McCarthy at his press conference on Tuesday had some praise for Buddy Johnson. That's a really good sign as far as I'm concerned. I think that, that that's a, a – you got to have somebody step up beyond your big four off-ball linebackers with asterisking Micah Parsons as, as he'll be moving around the defense plenty. Willie Harvey, Damian Wilson, Buddy Johnson, Brock Mogginson, uh, Jason Johnson, maybe Wheaton Vaughns, all fighting for one, maybe two spots at off-ball linebacker. Special teams will be key, and we'll get more of that as camp moves on. We will go more in-depth on multiple videos for Tyler Guyton, so don't, don't panic that we're keeping it brief on this one. Uh, he had another great day on Tuesday. Back-to-back -back days. He's gone up against Micah Parsons and not just survived, he's thrived at times. So I am exceedingly impressed by what I've seen from Tyler Guyton. Doga got a little bit nicked up. Uh, didn't actually win a rep against Micah, by the way, that people missed that one. He got him in the hands of the face and on the same play. It was two penalties in one, but, you know, camp angles are sometimes tricky. Guyton needs to be your week one starter. Stop splitting reps with the first team. He gets all the first team reps. That's... That, he has earned it at this point. Finally, a minor injury note. Ryan Flournoy still out for the Cowboys as he recovers from his minor knee injury. We'll see if he's back out there on Wednesday. 